All right, thank you very much for your interest in the OKR Journal and Planner. This is something I've been using for years on my own and kind of developed it over those years and thought it was finally ready for release so that others could benefit from this type of weekly planning to make sure that your OKRs are actually getting some work done on them. We've all had that experience where we set some objectives, we know what we have to do to get there, but then the work day comes, the work week comes, we get flooded with all that inbox material. Some of you probably use the getting things done method like I do. This provides just another layer of defense, if you will, so that I can protect my work week and get stuff done. So this is the first time it's been printed on Amazon. This is the first time I've released it out into the wild, so to speak. So I'm very eager to get your feedback. And you'll see in the book that there are URLs and QR codes that you can use to provide me feedback at any time to make this resource better. Also, if you're not familiar with OKRs, if you're just getting started, you'll find a couple of web pages where I link to other great places other great resources, all free and easily accessible on the web, um, to learn about OKRs, to learn about this method for moving yourself, moving your company, moving your startup forward. Now, I'm currently a teacher and do my business kind of on the side, if you will. So a lot of my OKRs are more personal. And that's fine. You can use your personal OKRs. But you can also use the OKRs for a startup, or for your company. So I want to walk through how to use this here. One thing I want to mention, you'll see it's fairly large, okay? And there's lots of room for writing. The reason for that is there is actually kind of a connection that gets made between your brain and the page. And if you write something down, that almost wires your brain to be thinking about it. So this kind of weekly work with your OKRs is going to help your brain be wired to be thinking about them, be looking for opportunities for making progress on your key results. So let's take a look at how this book is laid out. Well, first of all, you'll notice that there is just one page which has some basic information on how to use this planner, where to get started with OKRs, um, a little video that I think is fairly useful on pre-mortems, uh, and a link to this tutorial as well. Now you'll see I provided many pages for writing down your OKRs. Should you have eight different OKRs that you're working on? Probably not. That's probably not the greatest idea. Probably what you want to do instead is be having, having just a few. However, I find that sometimes I'm actually thinking about OKRs in the future. So these might not be ones that I'm going to work on uh, right now. So I might not be working on these OKRs this quarter. But this is one that I want to think about in the future. And maybe I want to start brainstorming about those key results. Also, one thing I'll point out about this journal and planner is that it includes, um, I think, some 30... What did I include here? 39 weeks. Yeah, 39 weeks of um, kind of journaling and planning how you're going to achieve your key results. But they're all um, not dated. Okay, so you can pick this up at any particular time. Now, here's where you would write down your objective. So, for example, uh, just to give an example we can play with, uh, I want to become a uh, world famous, if you will, authority on AI and business. That's actually something I talk about a lot. Now, if this was something that I was actually thinking about working on this quarter, I would actually use this little thing here to kind of fill in or highlight that this is something I'm thinking about working on, or I am working on, this quarter. Then I'd have my key result. So I think that I'm going to become a world-famous uh, authority on AI and business if I uh, write, um, and let's say I'm doing this on a quarterly basis, uh, I write um, two uh, medium posts 
per week on this topic. How many have I done so far this quarter? Well, I've actually done two. Uh, how many am I going to do? Well, let me see. That would be... Um, oh, I shouldn't do math in public here, but let's just say that it's uh, um, some... Uh, well, let's say 30 of these, okay? So that's what my target is. So I got my target here, and you can see in kind of the gray here the number you have now and your target. Okay? I might move on to say I'm going to um, uh, make a book proposal on this topic. Okay? How many I've done now? Zero. How many do I want to do? One. Okay? And I could go on uh, so to more key results. I think I'd move move me forward. So, for example, I also appear on a lot of podcasts. Maybe that would uh, be something I would choose to help me move forward. But like I said, there's lots of other good resources on how to set your objectives and key results, and that's not really what I want to show you. So then the next thing is, is to come to this. Um, we have both a planner and a weekly review. Okay, so week one, planner. We have a little quote here. And we can put in the week start date. And then we put down what are some of the deliverables that are going to actually give me results this week. Okay, so um, what key result am I working on? So in this case, let's say I was working on writing the two medium posts per week. So I'm working on 3-1. I'm going to write a post about... Um, anti-cheating software and AI. Sorry for my handwriting, but uh, I can read it and it works well for me. Um, how, what is my estimated hours on that? So really think about what is a reasonable time? Are you going to really have the time in your week? We'll get to that in a little bit. But I find if you break these things down and really stop and think about well, you know, with the research I'm going to have to do, I might want to call somebody and talk with them. This may take me three to four hours. So let's go with the high number here, four hours. Okay. Then I'd once again look at those other deliverables, maybe for other different key results that I want to, uh, will, will help me move forward on those. And then when you get down here, you're going to want to look at what is the total number of hours. I think this is a very useful exercise because if you get down here, and you have 40 hours, or you have 140 hours, you're going to know this may not be reasonable. Okay? And that's where you also have this section here for writing what else is happening this week. So take a time to look at your calendar and think about all the other things that are happening this week. What else do you have to get done that are appointments, that are things that you're going to have to do for your family and friends? What else do you have to get done? And then do a gut check. Is it really reasonable that you're going to get 40 hours worth of work done on these deliverables? If not, reevaluate. I also like to do pre-mortems. Okay, so really think about, okay, I've got to the end of my week. I got nothing done whatsoever. What happened? Why was that? Okay, and so um, answering some of these questions, starting to think about, how can we get out an, ahead of that? Okay. And then actually blocking off the time. So saying, well, I'm going to work from 2 to 5 on Monday. And I'm going to do that on deliverable number 1. Okay, So that D1 that's over there. And then Tuesday, I've got a, a huge amount of time that I'm going to be able to devote to this. So I'm going to have two time blocks that I'm going to devote to a different deliverable. Okay? And once again, you're kind of looking at your calendar scheduling around that. You may have entire weeks that you're not unable to do anything. Okay? But hopefully this will help you get some reasonable expectations. I would also suggest once you're done with this kind of analysis, transfer this into busy appointments on your calendar. Okay? So go ahead and do that time blocking. So at the end of the week... Look at how did you move the needle? So our key result here that we were working on was 3-1. Um, that was the uh, uh, key result code. What was that um, uh, result was on a Medium article. 
and um, what was the uh, target and what is it now? Okay, so uh, target was, I believe, 30, and now I've got three that are actually completed. When I get to the end of this, I can check off done, that I'm actually done with that as well. Then going down, here's the space to really think about what, is, what are the wins you want to remember? Uh, what do you want to reflect on from this week? What were some important things that happened? And any notes you want to take. Then one of the most valuable exercises um, for self-improvement, I think, is using a start, stop, and continue. Okay, so reflect back on the week. What should you start doing, doing that you did not do? Okay, try and pick just one, maybe two items. You don't want to pick 20 different things. You pick, pick one or two items that you want to improve on or a habit you want to pick up or work on this week. What's not productive? What do you need to stop doing? Sometimes these are some difficult decisions. So, for example, you may decide that you need to stop having lunch with your buddies that ends up going for a couple hours. You may need to stop going to happy hour because you're sluggish afterward. You may need to stop um, snacking all the time. You may need to stop interacting with certain people going to certain meetings. Okay, That's sometimes difficult because people are tugging at you all the time. But really think about, you know, what should I stop doing that is really preventing me from getting this work done? And continue. What, what is going well? What is really working for you? Maybe it's something you was on your start list from last week. Um, what do you need to continue doing or maybe improve upon? So that's a valuable uh, question to ask as well. Then this last one here, I've selected a video for each week. I like to watch a TED Talk. I like to watch um, somebody who I consider successful talk about their life. Uh, I like to get some advice on how to improve some of my technical skills as well as some of my... Um, you know, I guess emotional skills, we might say. So I provide a video each week, and you can go to this URL, or you can simply scan this QR code with your phone, and you will we'll be taken to that video, and you can take some notes on what you thought was valuable there. And so the week just keeps, uh, the weeks just keep on coming. So by picking this process of planning for your week, doing some reflection on how that week went, really picking out key deliverables that are going to move you forward with delivering your key results, and then doing a retrospective every week and taking a look at what went right, what went wrong, how did you move that needle, and maybe do, doing a little thinking about the broader scope of things, for me, provides a way that I can see every week I'm making progress. Okay, and I think that's a big thing as far as motivation goes, is to make sure that you're making that progress. So uh, in the last page here, you will find a play, place where you can reach me. You can provide some feedback, uh, as well as some of the other resources I provide. So please check that out when you get a chance. And uh, I hope you enjoy this resource.